plaintiff, Susan Fenley, says her daughter was married to the defendant, and Susan loved him like a son, until she discovered he was using drugs. Susan claims the defendant lost his job, his wife, and his home as a result of his drug use, and can only see his children while supervised. Susan suing her daughter's ex for the cost of a car. Defendant Matthew Drinkard says Susan is not as sweet and innocent as she looks. And she once had the police called on her for throwing knives at a family member. Although Matthew admits to wrecking Susan's car, he insists he was sober at the time of the accident, and he believes Susan is charging for more than he owes. All right, let's start with you. Matthew has always been like a son to me until he got into drugs. He... And was married to your daughter? He was married to my daughter. He wasn't like a son, he was your son. Right, right. In law. And I loved him like a son mm -hmm. until he got into drugs. And he lost- What type of drugs did he get into? Uh, to your oxy, knowledge? Oxy, cotton, all the way up. How did you find out? My daughter told me. Okay. And he lost jobs. He wrecked cars. When did this begin? Well, he wrecked one car, I think it was two or three years before this. That's how he got that bad cut over his eye now. Okay. Ended up losing his home, his family, his wife, and he can't even see his child now except with supervised visitation. We hear from you, sir. Is all this true? Uh, well, let me start from the beginning. We, uh, me and hers never really got along at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a rarity. Well, we, we try Very to get rare along. for a son-in-law not to get along with the mother-in-law. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. Right. <laughs> she's always come across as this real nice, sweet, innocent person, and she's just not like that at all. Um, this is a person that's been, had the police called on her for throwing knives at family members. I mean, she's trying to make me look like a real bad guy in this situation. I have made some bad choices. Um, I don't deny that. But I'm not a bad guy, and I was never on drugs or anything in this accident at all. Okay, we haven't spoken about this accident. Okay. Have uh, you been on drugs and yeah. lost everything? Uh, I have, uh, back in the past, way before. Okay, what have you been doing since then? <laughs> I have got a job back. I was uh, trying to rebuild my life. Um, in March, I didn't have a form of transportation to go back and forth to work. Um, they offered to let me borrow their Jeep. Okay, I'm gonna let them tell me about the car. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, this goes back a week before I let him use my car. He wrecked his truck, almost the same spot. He said he passed out at the wheel. And nobody else would let him drive their car. They I knew did. he was a drug addict. Right. You did too. Yeah, she I did. did too. Right. But <laughs> since I wanted, I wanted my daughter and my grandchild to be supported, so I let him borrow my car. He hit an object. Okay. Went about 50 miles an hour across two lanes into a telephone pole. And he wrapped my car around the telephone pole. And when people talk about, oh, he wrapped his car around the telephone pole, no, I mean he really. You have pictures? I do. Wrapped it around the telephone pole. The front end stopped on the telephone pole, and the rest of the car went around it. He hit it with such force that his body sheared off the gear shift le lever. And I'm not here to say he's a bad guy. I'm here to say he's a good guy when he's sober. He was a good husband, he was a good daddy, and his daughter adores him. But unfortunately, he has never been held accountable for his mistakes. What do you say about this accident, sir? Uh, I've got a copy of the police report. Nowhere in the police report does it say anything about any alcohol, any... Why don't you tell me what happened? I was driving to my job from where I'd eaten lunch. I was driving in a, the right, right side lane and I was messing with the radio or something. I look up, there's a car in front of me. I instantly swerve to miss this car head on collision mm -hmm. and I crash right into a telephone pole. No, sir. He admitted in the hospital that he was huffing when he wrecked both cars. Huffing, uh, huffing aerosol. Drugs? Yeah. 
And in the police report, sir, the witness. Are you doing uh, that? No, sir. Again, the, there's no nothing in my system. They did a toxicology report. That won't show up on a tox screen. He admitted. What do you it. have? You're saying and you I've have got something? the accident report, and it's even got where the paramedics were the same ones that came the week before mm -hmm. when the same thing happened. Huffing is something mm -hmm. you can't prove. He admitted it okay. when he was in the hospital. All right, sir. Well, the fact is, whether you were getting high and totaled a car or whether you were playing with the radio and totaled a car, you were negligent. Yes, sir. I agree with that. And and that's, I've never denied that. Okay. It's just the amount she was wanting. I, I was willing to take care of the vehicle. The cost of the vehicle. Let's she, see that again. She's wanting. <laughs> she was wanting. What well do you think she should get a couple hundred? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> a and here's the Kelly the Blue Book <laughs> value. Slap a little paint on it. And here's the Kelly Blue Book. <laughs> I, guess, I agree. <laughs> How much do you think she should get? <laughs> yeah. I think she should get what the, the Kelly Blue Book was worth at and the time. And here it is. I see it, please. And in fact, I've gone down on it because it was in pristine condition, and I'm only claiming good. All right. And also, we it sent says him. It says 5100, sir. Can I show you mine and we sure. find out what the Let's difference see it, is? <laughs> we sent. I sent him a letter just asking him just to make payments, but he never would even pick up the letter when it was tried to be delivered. This is it, unopened, that we got back. Now, what so is the I difference? Why do we have such a vast difference? That's what I was In your estimate point. from hers. I do not know. You don't know? No. All right. Well, I'm going to go with hers because she knows. Okay. <laughs> Judgment for the plaintiff, $5,000 based on not only this, but what I'm looking at. He wants to give you $2,000 <laughs> for this damage. That's the uh, Kelly Blue Book value that he hands me and cannot explain. But also, I wanted to ask you, I know how you are, if you could help him. He's been to rehab twice, and it hasn't worked. And I don't want my grandchild to grow up without a daddy. Are you using drugs? No, some hard he drugs? just got out of jail. Uh, for what? Crack. Sir, is that for, true? For what? Crack. <laughs> no, <sir>. <laughs> When? <laughs> he got out of jail about two weeks. About two, three weeks ago. What I mean, was it's he all doing? on record. Tell me how it happened. The crack. Issue. All I know is my daughter told me, called me one day and said, Matt's in jail again. This time it's for crack. Okay. Sir, would you be willing to take a drug test? Yes, sir. Right now. Oh, right. <laughs> and if you're, uh, if you're uh, dirty, uh, would you be willing to go into rehab? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. No? All right. That's the order. Judgment for the plaintiff. Good luck. Thank you, Ron. I want this to find me and not to have to deal with this situation anymore. And I want him to get help so he can be the good daddy that I know he is. We're about to find out how sober I am. <laughs>